So here's the big question. How are entrepreneurs like us, who have been hustling and struggling to make it to success, who seem to make it one step forward, only to fall two steps back, who are dedicated, determined, and driven, how do we finally break through and win? That is the question, and this podcast will give you the answers. My name is Brian Kelly, and this is the Mind Body Business Show. Hello, everyone, and welcome, welcome, welcome to the Mind Body Business Show. Hey, so glad you could join us here tonight. Uh, you got a sneak peek there of our guest expert who's coming on, had a little snafu in the tech. That is great. How are you doing? My name is Brian Kelly, the host of the Mind Body Business Show. It is a show for entrepreneurs, by entrepreneurs. And what I love to do is bring on super, super successful, high quality individuals such as Jack Turk, who you got a glimpse of there just a little bit ago, who is going to be on screen here in just a moment. We're going to share his brilliance, his wisdom, his value with you. The Mind Body Business Show um, it was built on the what I call the three pillars of success, and that being the three words of the show, mind being mindset, where I discovered that the most successful people had a very powerful and flexible mindset to a person and body. Uh, each and every one of the successful people I know took care of themselves. And it doesn't mean that they became a bodybuilder or a, a glamour model, but they did take care of themselves uh, nutritionally and they would exercise on a regular basis. And business. Business is multi, multi, multifaceted. There are so many areas that successful people I studied had mastered, including sales, marketing, team building, systematizing, leadership, and I could go on and on and on. The good news is you don't have to master every single one of those. Nobody does. You only really need to master one. And actually, I mentioned that one in that list. And that one is leadership. Because once you've mastered the skill set of leadership, you now can and are able to delegate, delegate those tasks out to the others that have mastered the skill sets you have not yet done. And that way, there's really no need for you to ever master all of them. And to be honest, I don't know if there's enough time for anyone human on this planet to do so, because there are a lot. And so that's why leadership is so vitally important. And on that note on leadership and the skills that are involved in becoming very successful, one of the other traits I noticed of the highly successful are that they are to a person very voracious, voracious and avid readers. And with that, I'd like to segue into a little quick segment I affectionately call bookmarks. Bookmarks, born to read. Bookmarks, ready, steady, read. Bookmarks, brought to you by reachyourpeaklibrary.com. There you see reachyourpeaklibrary.com on the side of myself to the right on the screen. If you're watching this live, if you're on a podcast, just follow along. And if you are online right now, do yourself a favor and resist the desire to click away to type in these resources because i know jack's going to bring us some tonight uh, i can't wait for that and instead of actually going and clicking and looking instead i would implore of you to do this and that is to take notes that is exactly what i will be doing i have my notepad ready uh, with traditional pen and paper and then when the show is over, you can then go back to your notes and then visit those resources. And why I say that is because I would really hate for you to miss out, to take your attention, your gaze elsewhere, right at the moment that Jack Turk drops that wisdom bomb that could potentially change your life for the better going forward. So stay with us, stay on the show and, and watch. And by the way, uh, this show is sponsored by the big insider secrets. And for all of you that stay on to the end, we will show you a way to win a five night stay at a five star luxury resort. Compliments of them. That's my buddy, Jason Nast at the big insider secrets.com. So reach your peak library. What is that? That is a website that I literally had made with you in mind. It may sound cheesy, but it's true. I kid you not. 
these are books that I personally have read. And here's the thing. I did not start reading until quite a bit later in life, uh, around 47 or so. I'm 56 at the time of recording this. And uh, so I just started reading somewhat recently in my life. And I just began devouring them. And I love Audible. That's my form. And I just began reading all the books you see on the screen, some physical, mostly on Audible. And what I decided to do is just put a list together of only the books that had a significant impact on my, either my business or my personal life or both so that you had a one-stop shop. You could just go there and pick a book and look, the, all these buttons, they go to, they go to Amazon. It's like, I think I make three cents. If you buy a book, if this is not a money-making website, it's really here as a resource for you. And in fact, if you see a, a book title and you just want to go buy it on Amazon, you want to bypass any possible affiliate link, go ahead. It's, it's not here for money. It is here for you to get the information you need. Oh, the e-myth, that's a beautiful one. I see it scrolling by. This is all for you to grab the first book that jumps off the page that you, the four agreements, my gosh, that's phenomenal. I got to stop looking at these books. So that is there for you, a resource, our gift to you for watching this show. So again, write that down and then come back because write it down. Don't go there now because I'm bringing on our guest expert. Here he comes. Get ready for him. Jack Turk is on the way. It's time for the Guest Expert Spotlight. Savvy, skillful, professional, adept, trained, big league, qualified. And there he is, ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only, Mr. Jack Turk. Yes. Brian, those are such great adjectives you apply to other people. I'm, I'm honored to be included with any of those adjectives. Every one of them applies to you, my friend. Every one of them. Uh, that or they wouldn't be there, and you wouldn't be here on this show. You, that's the qualification criteria: is that those adjectives match the person that I have on the show. So I appreciate you coming on, Jack. Uh, real quick before we formally bring you on. Oh, it just flashed on before me. Uh, hey, if you're struggling with putting a live show together and it's overwhelming, and you want a lot of the processes done for you while still enabling you to put on a high quality show and to connect with great people like Jack Turk and grow your business all at the same time, well then head on over to carpetbombmarketing.com. Carpet Bomb Marketing, saturate the marketplace with your message. And one of the key components that is contained in the Carpet Bomb Marketing courses, one that you'll learn how to absolutely master is the very service we use to stream our live shows right here on the Mind Body Business Show. Now, over the course of, gosh, going over nine years now, uh, we have tried so many of these quote unquote TV studio solutions for live streaming. And I'll tell you right now, StreamYard, as far as I'm concerned, is the best of the best, or I wouldn't be using it right now. It combines supreme ease of use along with unmatched functionality. So go ahead and start streaming high quality, professional looking shows for free with StreamYard right now. Write this website down and visit it later. It is ryp.im forward slash stream live. One more time, it's ryp.im forward slash stream live. And then you can put on a phenomenal show and have amazing people like Mr. Jack Turk next to me. And hey, I may even, uh, I may even uh, suggest that you put him on your show if that, if that fits your show, of course. All right. With that, finally, officially, Brian's going to stop yakking so much. Well, no, I, you know what? I have to introduce you. I got to give oh, you the well, respect yeah. you came for and deserve. You only gave me six adjectives. Come on. There's got to be more. <laughs> I love it. So you're going to love this, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Jack Turk, he is the world's fastest copywriter. Not just the fastest. I'm going to add one more in there. The best as well. Uh, he is the hidden man behind the curtain for No BS Inner Circle, which is a company founded by Dan Kennedy. So if you've been around any time at all in the business circle and marketing, you know that name, Dan Kennedy, and many other prominent marketing experts in dentistry, finance, and small business. He has written copy that has generated, get this, millions of dollars in sales for corporations like Microsoft and Kodak, as well as small businesses, including dentists, attorneys, physicians, even, I like this one, magicians. And he's done webinars, TV commercials, sales letters, ad copy for all of this. 
email, product launches, websites, info products, and much, much more. I'm getting tired. That's fantastic. That is it. Finally, officially, Jack Turk. How are you doing, my friend? I'm doing great, Brian. Thank you so much for having me on tonight. I really appreciate this opportunity to share a few ideas and thoughts with your audience. Oh, my goodness. I'm so excited because uh, when it comes down to it, marketing is the lifeblood of any business. And I would say, at least for my part, the hardest part of all of marketing to me is getting the copywriting correct, getting it to where people are leaning in as they're reading. They want to hear more. What's the next line going to be all the way to the call to action or whatever that happens to be. Uh, so what I wanted to find out, Jack, you've been doing this quite some time and you're very successful at what you do. And it, you know, you're an entrepreneur, you're a business owner. It takes a lot of a lot of very strong mindset skills to be able to do what you do, any entrepreneur to, to gain success. So I was curious, you know, I like to dig deeper more than just the experiences and accolades that come from your bio. What is it like when you get up in the morning and you know that you have challenges coming up uh, in front of you for your business to grow it, to do that next thing? What is going on in that big, beautiful brain of yours that keeps you motivated, keeps you going and positive day in and day out? I think the first thing I do every day, and I have gotten more disciplined about this over the past few years, is that I take time to express gratitude mm. for the day. I think it's such an important thing to realize and have perspective that our time is limited. We get a, we get a slice of eternity. You know, We get our own little slice, and it's a gift. It's a gift to have this experience to be able to be here for that slice of time. And nothing is written in stone as to whether I'll have a slice of time tomorrow or next week or the week after or the month after or the year after. And so every day is a gift and I make sure to express gratitude to God that he has blessed me with one more day. And may I have the opportunity to serve and benefit and grow from that day and those experiences. I love that. That That's uh, one of the key elements. I, I, I've i done so many of these interviews and that that is a constant theme. Not every single one, but a very, very uh, prominent theme is that is the one of gratitude, the attitude of gratitude, some would say, for the catchy rhyme it has. Mm -hmm. And the cool thing is it works. Uh, you know, I got in the habit of I used to commute long ago. I used to commute to a job and it was a horrible desolate commute. I <laughs> didn't like it at all. And it was boring. And I didn't listen to books back then. I hadn't started reading. This is going back a ways. And I just start being thankful for things like, uh, thank you for me being able to see this desolate place. Thank you for the fact that I have eyesight. Thank you for, and it just would get, you mm -hmm. know, the more ridiculous you make it, it doesn't matter if you are showing that attitude of gratitude. It's like rewiring your brain and you're, you're, you're better for it and your day is much brighter. It just works and it's simple to do and it costs nothing. <laughs> it costs nothing. And you know, I, I'm going to just riff on just for a moment longer. I think we have a, a society and a culture today that does not appreciate how blessed we are, how good we have it. Um, one of the benefits, one of the other things I do regularly is read ancient literature, whether it's the mm -hmm. Bible, whether it's the writings of Marcus Aurelius, uh, Plutarch, whomever, you know, reading thoughts and wisdom from people from hundreds, if not thousands of years ago, makes you realize how the human condition has never changed and how good we have. And, and really look at that circumstances, no matter what your circumstances are, you know, if, you know, I'm guessing just about everybody on this, on this call right now, they've got good water to drink. They got a roof over their head. They're not really concerned about, you know, where they're going to eat, where they're going to eat tonight. I mean, those they got clothes on. They're not going to be naked out in the in the storm and the weather. And for most of human history, that wasn't a given. <laughs> that really wasn't. So we should be grateful for every moment. It, we have so much to be thankful for. And that, I think, yeah. really inspires your day. Couldn't agree more. I mean, taking it down to the point of like, there's times where I will mutter the thing, like, I'll say something like, oh, I have to go do dishes now. And then I go, wait a minute, I get to do dishes. You know, exactly. catch that have to and put it into a get to because I only get to because I've been blessed to have dishes to wash and right. a sink to wash them in. And 
the the kitchen within to do that, which is enclosed by a house, which, you know, so you can just go on. And it has this subtle, beautiful, positive undertow to the brain. Even, uh, you know, it's not even an outwardly conscious thing where you unwrap it and go all the way. Well, I have a house. I have a, that means I have, you know, a job or something to pay for that house. It just happens internally. And you just start living each day more fully, in my humble opinion. Is that what happens to you, Jack? Oh, absolutely. And I think I, I just, it brought to mind a couple other th points. One of them, I remember um, going to a, one of these, a, a seminar, you know, a business seminar. And one of the speakers said, I think it was Matt Fury. It was Matt Fury. He made the point, and I never heard this kind of thinking before, was that there are opportunities, there's money in the air floating by me. And an entrepreneur sees things differently. And I first sees opportunities all around, whereas people who have got a negative mindset, who are down to the dumps, who feel like they're failures, who feel like life is against them, they don't see opportunities everywhere. But an entrepreneur sees, sees literally sees money in the air. And that is so important to have that kind of mindset and um, opportunity thinking. Totally agree. It's funny you say it in the air. I had a thought uh, in the water. Uh, when when this whole thing first hit, this whole pandemic, one of the things that you could not find anywhere was an essential, which was called toilet paper, right? Oh. <laughs> and I just remember thinking, I know there's a solution to this. And then it hit me. I said, I, I went looking online uh, because I'd heard of this device that is not very prevalent in the U.S., but it is in Europe. It's called a bodet. And it literally squirts water from beneath into your behind and, and washes it in to be honest, cleaner than we, we're just smearing it all over ourselves, to be honest. <laughs> and if you use a bidet, it's washing you, literally. It's cleaning you. And I thought, wow, it would be awesome if there was a portable one of these. And they're, they do exist. And you can clamp them onto your toilet seat right now from Amazon. I thought, oh, my gosh, if I had that idea from the beginning of all this, mm -hmm. I would have just raked it in. But that's an, that's an example, right? Everyone's thinking, oh, I don't have any toilet paper. Well, you can get this bidet and probably pay less for it than you will for toilet paper over the next couple of months. <laughs> well, this, this took a turn I didn't expect, but uh, I, <laughs> I, I, of course, started thinking about squirt guns. I don't know why, but I just, <laughs> I, you know, just looking at, you know, you know, economizing, of course, but, you know, but whatever. <laughs> I love it. So uh, I'm, I'm going to just guess or uh, would you call yourself uh, an avid reader as I was talking about in the opening of the show I see a few books in a bookshelf behind you there I, uh, yes I, I, I read if I'm not reading if I'm not reading a physical book I'm reading online I'm reading on Kindle I'm I I don't know how many books a year I read uh, a number I, I just don't even I'm just always reading something um, my most recent book and I I, I try I'll admit, I don't read as much fiction as I, I used to read a lot of fiction. I know that the fiction I do read now, I'm, I'm a big fan of H.P. Uh, Lovecraft and the Cthulhu mythos, all the, you know, Cthulhu and the Call of Cthulhu. And, and you have to pronounce, you know, if you're a real geek, you say Cthulhu as opposed to Cthulhu. You know, I have I was once corrected by a real geek on this. So I, I now have been, you know, you know lectured and uh, schooled in the proper pronunciation of Rely on you know, Fatagan, whatever, whatever this is. Um, so I like Lovecraft, um, but I do read a lot of other things. One kind of, which you would think is a thousand miles away, which I just finished reading, was a big book called Thinking Orthodox, which is called about understanding and acquiring the Orthodox Christian mind. Huh. Which is a, and I don't come from that tradition. Um, and I thought, well, that's interesting. I thought that would be because there's and Western civilization really doesn't think much about Eastern Orthodox, the church and those Russian Orthodox, et cetera, and the Greek. You know. And it was very fast. It was fascinating. And um, it got there. It, a big thing in that is pushed all through the book is called and I think it's apl applicable to, to entrepreneurs. It's called the word is phronema. And they're big about phronema, which is the Greek word, which is translated mindset or a way of thinking. And the Orthodox mind, the Orthodox church has a specific mindset and way of thinking that is different than how Western churches think in terms of 
it's Western Church is based on Thomas. Like a lot of, I'm getting real deep in this crap, but a lot of Thomas Aquinas, which talked about faith plus reason, and the phronema of the Eastern Orthodox Church is different. And we all have a certain, we approach life with a with a phronema, with a way of phronema, a way of looking at things, a mindset. And it's very important to be aware of the mindset. Mm. It really may be conscious of that, how important your mindset is. And again, back to the notion of gratitude from the very beginning. Your mindset is critical to protect it and think about it, not just let it happen. Totally agree. Oh, hey, we got a wonderful young man here named S.T. Tangarada. He's really enjoying this. I know this young man, Jack, and, you know, as a matter of fact, you two should meet because he's a he worked with me as an apprentice in my company. He did a phenomenal job and he's looking to expand in the realm of copywriting. Go figure. Oh. So maybe I will uh, introduce the two of you at oh. some point after the fact and maybe you can uh, be the Yoda to uh his uh, what, what's the other character's name that that Yoda talked to? I, I'm not Luke. Sure. Thank you. Luke. To Luke. Luke. <laughs> so St, you are now Luke, and if you're okay, Jack, you're Yoda now. <laughs> <laughs> that that I are whatever. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's a compliment either way. Hope you <laughs> understand that. Um, <laughs> so I want to get deeper into uh, a bit of your history, your backstory, like you were. You know, your bio, we talked about you worked with uh, Dan Kennedy's company or the the copywriter for the company. Uh, how did that come about? What kind of experience was that? And then what has it led to? Like, where are you now? OK, um, I got into it. I have been a writer since since uh, college. I get into writing uh, kind of as an offshoot. I went into college initially to become uh, a chemist in the paper industry. Um, I have a kind of a technical mind and I like, I like that kind of stuff like science. And I got to college on a scholarship for paper. And while I was there, my first semester, my, my, I think my uh, first, second semester there, I saw an ad in student radio, student newspaper on how to, can you be funny? So I thought, yeah, that sounds like fun. So I tried that. I got involved doing a radio comedy group in college. Uh, one of the guys in the radio comedy group, we did radio scripts and radio shows for about, for a couple of years. And one of the guys was um, Tim Allen. And I've known Tim Allen since uh, wow. since the late seventies, and I was actually visiting him. Like last time I saw him was last last March at a, a taping of Last Man Standing, and I, have, I we we chat now and then. He's a great guy. Um, so I got into writing then. And I switched majors, kept my minor in mathematics, switched majors to English. And I got into the computer industry. I basically spent years and years writing documentation. I wrote a lot of documentation. I wound up at Microsoft eventually. Mm and uh, in the multimedia systems group. And I wrote the first help file for Windows Media Player. Oh, wow. I wrote, wrote the first programmer documentation for um, uh, video for Windows, the AVI uh, oh, file. Wow. I wrote the, the AVI file format documentation. And uh, it's the reason, actually the reason we're streaming right now, I think I could take a little credit for it. Maybe not a lot, but just, just a hint because it's all based on audio video interleaved. Um, and then I was at Microsoft for, and I bounced around at Microsoft, did a bunch of different things. I was a writer, writing manager. I did project management. I have my Microsoft project management uh, um, paperweight here. It has all these things about project management and stuff. I took the course there and uh, did a, managed a bunch of projects and websites for Microsoft. I even did some game design. And, um, and then on my 50th birthday, I was working on Flight Simulator. I did all the instructional design for Flight Sim. And I worked on Age of Empires. Uh, I told him, my boss came in with happy birthday, Jack. And I left and I said, hey, Alan, I'm going to quit. And I, I left Microsoft to become a, a full-time magician. Wow. And for, oh, I don't know, about eight years, I was doing two to 300 shows a year, performing primarily children's birthday parties all across the Northwest. Um, and... I got real. I was I was pretty good, you know. I'll be. I'm not. I'm not the world's greatest magician. Um, I will acknowledge I'm probably somewhat of a hack compared to these guys. You know, the guys who you mentioned earlier. We chatted about, you know, fool. Can you can you fool me? The uh, Penn and Teller thing. No, yeah. I can't fool Penn and Teller. No way. This just can't. I can't. Couldn't do it. Um, <laughs> but I can market myself. I was a pretty good marketer. I learned how to market. And I had like a list of, I actually had a little info business on how to market to magicians, how magicians could learn how to market their services. So while I was doing shows, I built an info business 
of about wow. 15 magicians worldwide. And I had like a website and 20 some products and marketing and show development and stuff like that. And while I was doing that, I was also starting to get more and more people. They saw how I was writing good copy. I had people come, hey, could you write some copy for me? And, one, and um, I learned all this from Dave D, who I give great credit for. He's a devotee of Dan Kennedy. And Dave's like an awesome human being, brilliant marketer, great copywriter, um, neat guy too. And he basically, I started buying all his stuff. And I started implementing and he started saying, this guy actually does, you know, gets off his butt and does something. And he said, hey, why don't you take this little project for me? And so I did the little project. And then he said, hey, why don't you take this? Why did I do that? So but before long, instead of me sending him money, he started sending me money. And I started doing all stuff for him. You know, I was doing copy for him. Da, da, da. And I worked with Dave for like years. And Dave eventually got hired by Dan Kennedy, uh, by GKIC to be the VP of marketing. And after a quick test of like, can I write? The test was, can I write some emails in the voice of Dan Kennedy and being a somewhat older, grumpy, you know, middle, mid, Midwestern sort of you know, <laughs> Protestant, Presbyterian, what kind of person, you know, whatever I am, you know, um, I didn't find that too hard to write, like sound like Dan Kennedy. <laughs> I, I, could, I could just look at the way he wrote, thought, eh, I, can, I can do that. And um, they hired, brought me on. And for from 2012 to 2015, I was the head copywriter for GKIC. And we had two other copywriters on the team. And uh, basically, I managed the team and we produced. We were a copy machine. We had to generate emails, sales letters, long, long form, short form sales letters, website copy, webinars, product launches. Uh, I got involved in doing a lot of um, since I have an instructional design background, I got involved in doing a lot of development of some of the products. I was uh, key in developing the um, the uh, ultimate marketing machine mm. and uh, uh, the ultimate info marketing machine. I was involved with um, here's a product that Dan did the uh, called the source code. Oh, Brilliant wow. copy about money, understanding money, how money works, how money flows. Great product. You still get. I would actually advise buying this you know it's from from no bs it's a great product talking about money if you're interested in money and how it works i actually worked dan had the um dan produced all the information dan was is the mind the brilliance and i took his lectures his and and created like instructional points within as to here's what you know here's sort of money is a certain money is uh entirely entirely unresponsive to need so I basically put this stuff in a nutshell and created a workbook based on Dan's teachings. So that was my contribution for that product. And I did a bunch of other stuff for him too. Um, and it was just a great experience working with that whole team. It was a really great team. I still hang out and talk to people who still work there and who've left and gone on to bigger and better stuff. And it was a great experience. After three years, I was ready to branch out and do more stuff, serve more clients, just try different things. And I, I did 2015, I left, but not really because I actually stayed with them as a con as a contractor for, you know, the last thing I did was last summer. You know, I was still working on stuff for them up till last summer. I'm still in contact with them. So I have been doing stuff for them since, you know, 2015 still. Since, 20, since 2012, I've done stuff for Dan Kenny's company in OBS, written a lot of stuff in Dan's voice. Again, I'm kind of of the same generation as Dan. Yeah. Same background. We're small town, you know, Midwest sort of thing. And I I try to, you know, and I think I have really this is a tip if you have to write in somebody else's mind, is really get to know them. Mm. I mean, really look at their writing, read their writing. Um, one of the tips I've got was when I was starting copywriting is to take good copy and handwrite it out. So find a great sales letter and handwrite it. Um, I did that with Dan stuff. I read ton, immersed myself in Dan. Um, and it makes the difference. I mean, that's just, you get the voice, you get their voice. And that's so important if you're writing for somebody else to really understand their voice. It's interesting though. Yeah. When you do hang out with somebody for a long period of time and really get to know them, you do start sounding like them ultimately, even when you're oh. talking to other people. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and you, you know, kind of what, what's good about it is really not, it's not just knowing their, 
one, you got to know the, the words they use. When I worked, when I wrote for Dave, um, I knew the type of words he would use words like killer. Dave loved to use the word killer, you know, and different things he would use and phrases he would use. And Dan has the same thing. He has things like there's like the, there's writer downers. That's a, that's a, a Danism. He uses that all the time. Um, things like look around the room. You'll learn more from looking around the room. You look it up here at me, you know, that kind of stuff, you know, all these. <laughs> Danisms, planet Danisms. We <laughs> learn those, but you also learn. It's good to learn. You really need to learn if you, especially if you're doing somebody's voice. You need to know things about their life. Like, do they have kids? Mm. Do they have like hobbies. What hobbies they do? What they do in their spare time? You know, one of the things with Dan and I actually made the I'll share a mistake I made early on with writing as Dan is I mentioned a cell phone. And that is verboten. Would Dan would never, never have a cell phone. Never. Really? <laughs> wow. That's 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 pretty interesting. <laughs> so it, but so it's good to know. Like if you're writing for someone else, so you have moved on from that. And what have you moved into? What are you doing now? What is Jack Turk, the master copywriter, uh, doing? That's um, helping and serving others. Because I know you're doing stuff. I just want to hear from you. <laughs> oh, I, 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 I get little projects. I, you know, I have one, I have, I have a couple of really strong clients that I work with regularly. One's in the dental niche and he's an awesome human being. I don't, um, he is a, he is, he helps dentists really fulfill their dreams and lead better lives by making their practice, you know, running their practice the way they really want to run them. Yeah. You know, so many of us, and this is, and honestly, He's so brilliant in that it's so great to be be associated with really qual high quality people because even though he write he writes regularly to to Dan and I don't touch the stuff he you know he writes like a column to them and everything regular new and, but the the messages he writes are totally applicable to my business as a copywriter to someone else's business as perhaps uh, an IT shop to somebody else's business as like you know, a plumber or whatever, the same business lessons, thinking lessons, life, you know, prioritizing lessons all apply. Another great book I'll give you share. Sure. I, I just, I just finished reading a book from a, a previous client of mine and she's in the uh, legal niche. She helps attorneys and she wrote a, she, I'm see her on King and LinkedIn. She wrote a book to attorneys on business. And I read, I thought, God, everything she's saying is applicable to me, to my business. It's, it's just brilliant. That's fantastic. So it's the art of writing um, and knowing how to, to really speak to multitudes of people. And uh, you've you've figured it out. And so now you've you also have your whole like you have a website behind it about a certain way of copywriting. I'm not going to give it away. I did on the bio, but you have this unique um, way of going about writing a lot of copy in a short period of time. Would you mind uh, explaining how that works real quick? I actually have a visual demonstration for you. Oh, nice. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I, and this is like the first time I've done this. So we'll see how it goes. World so this is hard to back to my days as a magician. So there are three keys to writing copy fast. The first is mindset. You have to have the right mindset. You have to think, as I mentioned, the phronema the front name of the right mindset that you can write copy quickly. The second is you need tools. You need a set of proper tools in order to write copy quickly. Things like templates, things like outlines, headline formulas. And the third thing you need is a system. You need a system to write copy quickly. Now people wonder what's more important, mindset, tools, system, well, it's a problem you have to try to solve. Actually, I think when it comes down to it, they're all equal. They're all equal. Mindset, tools, and system all must be put into place. Love it. Encore, encore. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. So there you go. World premiere of a never before seen trick by the one and only Jack Turk. And all that's true because no one else has seen Jack Turk perform that trick. 
<laughs> so I wonder if Penn and Teller would have been fooled. Not uh, a chance. Not, <laughs> not a chance. <laughs> but I love that. So, you know, and that's another a great, actually, uh, tip for individuals that are out there marketing. Look what Jack just did. Like, like he utilized his love of magic to help illustrate a point, the three keys of writing, you know, killer copy or mastering copywriting, you know, using mindset tools and systems and used ropes to represent them originally at different lengths and then later all the same length. And basically the message is they're all equally as important. And I love that because people will, so that, that's the, the genius of Jack Turk, his copywriting, he just added a visual element to it and told a story. And is, is that important, Jack, to tell stories in your copywriting to keep people invigorated and going? I, th I think the, the, the more I, I write, the longer I'm at this, the more important I realize. And I'm, I'm only now starting to understand it fully and is like how powerful story is. Mm -hmm. um, I, it's how critical it is because uh, we are wired inherently to create narrative out of random circumstance, no matter what, our minds will create narrative, which is to our great detriment in some ways, to our <laughs> to our benefit in others. But it's you can't art you can't art. It's like I don't like gravity. Well, I'm sorry, gravity's there. <laughs> Ain't nothing you are going to do about it. And same thing about narrative and story. It's there. It's got to be there. And when you say, "Let me tell you a quick story," everybody's ears perk up. Yes. Everybody stops what they're doing. Because at that moment, you are brought back thousands, if not tens of thousands of years to the campfire where the, the chief tells the tale of coming back and how they took down the mastodon and why you're actually able to eat today <laughs> as opposed to going hungry one more day. Story matters incredibly powerfully. Yeah, and it's something I learned at a deep level from my mentor. And so what, what Jack is talking about is applicable to any form of communication. And when I was learning it, it was from stage, like physically training his students. And I loved he, he just put everything at ease at one point when, you know, we all we did. We had a PowerPoint to follow and we had notes and I'm teaching someone else's content, which I know you've done, Jack, and that can be a challenge. Oh, yeah. If it's not yours. It's a little bit more difficult. And so you're in your head thinking about what is the what is the point behind this one? I want to make sure I nail it and always worried about getting the detail just right. And then he finally put it in place and said, look, all the facts and figures, they aren't nearly as important as the stories you can tell that would relate to them. And as soon as I heard that, I was like, wow, that took the pressure off. I just want to tell the stories and, and weave it we have a story through all the stories and people will actually retain the information even better than if you had all these facts and figures up on the big screen, uh, that will just put them to sleep mm -hmm. them, unless they're very analytical. And so it, what you're saying metaphors, I think is true in all of life. If you're telling a story to your kids, uh, if you're, you know, if you're talking to your kids, if you're trying to teach them something, throw in a story, make it more invigorating. If you're a, Gosh, if you're a teacher, right, Jack? I mean, could you imagine if all teachers had the gift of storytelling? Um, I've had many great ones. Uh, some didn't know how to tell a story uh, <laughs> for their life, and they were the most boring instructor on the planet. But you know, everyone does the best they can. But I think, I think the point you're um, that you have brought up is that it is so important for people. Look, you don't have to be a master storyteller. It just needs to be something of interest, and it just kind of it does a quick state change. If you're talking about a certain product and all the benefits and features, and then a story comes up, you're like, you wake up, like, like Jack said, your ears get big, you lean in and now you want to hear more. And what's the next step to getting that great product that Jack has to offer you. And by the way, he has a gift to give at the end of this. I can't wait to share that. And to that end, do you mind if we pull up your uh, website real quick and no, give go ahead. that and see what you're up to? Cause you're up to a lot more than you've, uh, than you've uh, admitted to thus far. So let's pull that up real quick. And I wanna share your your brilliance and your wisdom and your value with everyone. And uh, go ahead, take it away. What do we see here and, and what well, do we is, know more of? I'm gonna be totally, I'll be totally upfront. One, um, I, I built this website because I figured, gee, I should have a website. 
<laughs> and I probably, I may well be, if we're going to get into like the, the theories of how you market yourself as a copywriter, I could well be the very worst copywriter when it comes to marketing myself. I could be <laughs> the worst person on the planet because I don't have, I do not have a great marketing funnel, et cetera, et cetera, for my own services. I, I be very honest, I get 100% of my business because I showed up someplace. Uh, I think it's, and I remember Dan's, Dan's um, axiom for like success is be somebody, be somewhere, do something. Be somebody, be somewhere, do something. Every dime I make is because I try to be somebody, I show up somewhere and I do something. You know, that's, that's my marketing system right there. You know, this is, <laughs> I suppose, being someplace and being somebody. I have a, um, a mailing list. I send out a regular email. I'm, I, I give great credit. Dave is great. To, I started doing this with Dave. I, Dave does a great email. He, he uh, is great at it. Ben Settle, I'll, I'll share another great name. Get on Ben's mailing list. Ben's a master. He's the best at emails. I am somewhat haphazard in my timing, I'll be honest. But all right, I think... Fun, informational, quality emails on how to write copy fast. I take some of them and I throw them up on this website. <laughs> so that's that is the ex, that's the uh, opening the kimono a little bit on that. <laughs> and you know what's really interesting about that, Jack? That is like universal. It's so interesting that you said all that, and thank you for your transparency, but. I, it's so funny because I'll be talking to a close friend of mine who has got their own business and they're struggling. And I'll ask them, what are you struggling with? They, they tell me, I said, oh, well, I would do this, 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 and this, like instantly. And they're like, oh, my God, I never thought of that. How did you? I said, I don't know. It just it's it's easy. But then when the tables turn and I'm trying to do my own, I freeze. I can't figure how to get out of a paper bag. It's unbelievable. It's very similar what you just said. It's like it's so much easier to do it for someone else than for yourself. I think, because, you know, we're so in our own business. It's a more emotional attachment. I don't know the reason behind it, but I can I can help other businesses and people till that cows come home like it's instant and effortless. And then they say, so tell me all about your stuff and what you're working on, what you need to do next. I'm like, oh, uh, just kind of go with this funk. <laughs> and so when you said that, that's immediately where I went to. I think that's a universal thing. Oh, what is it? Who was it that uh, was it? Um, the head of the CEO of Intel or somebody? I'm not sure. Maybe somebody else. But anyway, what's the CEO's question? The keys with the CEO's main question: What should I be doing right now? That is the critical question you should always be asking yourself yeah. throughout the day. What should I be doing right that's now? Question. And that's hard. That's a hard question to answer. Well, usually because we're doing something we shouldn't be doing right now. Right, right. We all, if we if we if we give ourselves a little moment of like reality, uh, maybe maybe that really wasn't the best thing I should could have been doing in my time right now. Yeah, I mean, so. totally. I mean, you get one little notification on your phone or something if you didn't turn it off, and you could spend another hour on Facebook or or now Clubhouse or all these other social media platforms, and then you look at the clock on. Oh no. I just threw mm -hmm. an hour of my day out the window and it's get back to focus. So, I mean, that's powerful right there. What should I be doing right now is what we should ask ourselves all the time. Yeah, it's a, it is a great question. I'll give you my other, I'll, I'll share my other favorite question. As long as we're on question uh, yeah. from Microsoft, I learned, I discovered this at Microsoft uh, and I didn't come up with it. It was somebody else. I, I can't remember his name, but the question is, what problem are we trying to solve here? Mm -hmm. yep. Exactly what problem are we trying to solve? And who owns solving that problem? Those two questions, that question, that first one, part of it is, is so critical when you're undertaking any kind of task. It's, you have to know. Why are you the reason you're doing it? What problem you're trying to solve? Because we often go off in directions that really make no 
aren't clear. We don't know what we're trying to do. Da 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 da. Uh, powerful questions. I hope everybody's writing this down. And just just to go back to that about writing things down. So I'm a director, producer, talent, and interviewer, and I'm still taking notes just as I had instructed everyone or recommended everyone do, rather than run off and do Google searches or look at your Facebook or anything else, stay with Jack and write notes. Those were three powerful questions, and I hope you all got those because, well, I'll do everyone a favor and recant them one time and write them down if you haven't. Uh, what should I be doing right now? Powerful to ask yourself. What problem are we trying to solve? That's a big one uh, because that's what entrepreneurs do. We solve issues, we solve problems and get paid to do it. And then who owns actually solving that problem? Mm, I love those. And it, you know what? What if it's you? What if you own the solution? Then yes. what should you yeah. be doing right now is <laughs> going and solving that issue. <laughs> paid well for it. And if you don't know how to market, if you don't know how to write the copy, I know someone who does. Hmm. He's sitting right next to me. His name is Jack Turk. Just in case, just in case you needed all of that. Um, my goodness. That those, you know, for this entire show, those were probably the three biggest nuggets of the entire show thus far. Uh, for those of you watching and listening, because take it from someone who's been around the block. He's uh, you know, this guy has been through a lot of phases and experiences in his life, you know, in the tech field, writing documentation for Microsoft software. I mean, you know, that's highly technical stuff uh, and could be very dry if you're the one writing it and if you're reading it. <laughs> it could be, it, it could be a thing. Yeah, but it takes a special intellect. It takes a special kind of person, a very analytical one, a very smart one to do that. And the thing is, is Jack has also a very creative mind. Those two often go together, I found. And I know you play guitar. I, I worked with many software engineers back in the day, and a lot of them actually were musical as well. And I thought, that seems odd because most of the time, analytical people aren't very musical, but a lot of them are. They're very creative as well. And um, yeah, so you have this process. Speaking of creativity, I, I want to dig into this. You have a process for writing copy really, really fast. And you present it in a way that's different than most that I've seen based on the visual part of it, if you know where I'm going with that. Uh, if you wouldn't mind, give a little synopsis about that. And then we'll lead into a nice gift you have for people that will help them along that path. Well, as I mentioned, I, there's... The first part of writing copy fast is is believing you can, mm. and you mentioned you know you pointed at me, which is very kind, and you know um, I'm honored. I honestly believe that everybody watching right now, listening right now, is quite potentially the very best copywriter you could find for your products or your services, because nobody else understands your customer as well as you do, understands your product or your service as well as you do, understands the difference that what you do can make in someone else's life, can actually, how they can transform their life from whatever the challenge they're facing right now to the ultimate destination you can get them to and experience and enjoy and appreciate. And so having the belief you can write fast is critical. And the other aspect of it is detaching yourself from the notion that you have to labor intensely for weeks, for months, for years over a piece of copy in order to make it good. The reality is nobody knows how good copy is until it actually gets out in the market. Until it's actually out the door, no one knows. So the key thing is to get it done. You have to think you have to think of yourself not as a writer, as in Ray Bradbury, Stephen King, whoever, you know, Charles Dickens. You are a project manager in charge of delivering a piece of sales material. And the process we go through through using tools is basically my process is to assemble all the different pieces to identify here's my offer and, uh, and brian kurtz who i give great credit brilliant marketer he'll say this over and over again like like 
the best copy is irrelevant if if the offer sucks. <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter how good your copy. You can have the best. And if your offer sucks and your list sucks, if you've got, you know, Halbert had the example, like you're starting a hamburger stand. What's the one ingredient? What's the one thing you really need to have? And people said, well, you got to have like the special bun. You got to have the great condiments. You got to have high quality meat. And Halbert said, no, I can beat you all. What you really want is a starving crowd. Mm. <laughs> and so the list, under finding your star starving crowd is critical. Finding the, the making the, the hamburger offer that is so good, it just can't be, it's irresistible. That's critical. And the copy, you know, you got those two, you know, here, here, buy this. And that's going to work, you know, period. I mean, you don't need fantastic, amazing copy if you have those two things. You got a killer offer, you got a killer list. Copy, you know, just share. So you basically get that. Those are you assemble. You get those pieces all put put down in place, and then the system is how you put them in you, but step by step. You start. Okay, let's do the headline. Let's do the subhead. Let's do the intro. Let's do the. Let's fill in the formula. The formula, which we mentioned earlier, you talked about stories. Your copy. Your copy is a your sales letter is a story. Just as. Mm. The, the great definition of story I always heard when I was trying, when I attempted to write fiction, which all was horrible, but the, the definition of story is get your hero, introduce your hero, get him up a tree, throw rocks at him, and then get him out of the tree. <laughs> How is that different than problem, agitate, solve? The classic formula. Problem, agitate, solve. I absolutely love it. And <clears throat> you have a system, and I might be giving something away here that... Uh, well, I'm going to. You have a system, a step-by-step uh, -step system, where you can take people, or where you do take people by the hand and show them how to write copy really fast. And you do it by experience, meaning you have them experience it in in the way that you actually write your own copy. And then you do a great, masterful job of explaining how and why it works so well. And then you also put some really cool, like, um, what are they called? Like, uh, I'm thinking of comic books, like uh, those frames uh, to make it come alive and be kind of fun, kind of along the lines of, you know, telling stories and metaphors now with pictures. And, you know, you can go back to your days of look, looking through comic books if you ever did that and, and have fun with it. But it, it makes more light of what so many people think is so doggone serious. And what you just said is everyone is their own best copywriter. And if you just go fast, and I've been through the first couple modules that you have in that system, uh, Jack, and I can I can see, you know, it's like, okay, this isn't that big a deal. You just want to write really fast and you get a few elements and you can write a story anybody can, like you took us through in that exercise. And I'm not going to give away your secrets on how that worked, but I highly recommend folks go to his website. And if they go to your website, how can they actually get to that? We'll get to the gift in a second. Uh, but I was wondering, is there a way for them to find that one a system yeah. that I'm talking about? That program? Um, well, um, you, since you're mentioning it, um, I don't, I kind of have it released on certain areas. It's available. Okay. If you, if you want, I can, I can put, I'll and give you the, uh, the web address, I suppose. Um, I if did not actually. Doing that, that would be phenomenal. I mean, it's a resource that people can use right now. I will. I'll put it in, in the, the chat for you. All right. Um, that's, that's the actual program. Um, I just finished doing a I'll, – I'll be I'm pretty transparent. I just did a quick little joint venture with a buddy of mine. And so I haven't – I just took down some of the stuff. That, so it's it's not you're, – you're, you're very gracious to indicate how much you like it. Um and it's like this is kind of the the deal, um, and it's a um, it's a right ultimate right killer copy fast toolkit. Uh, it's it it has three modules: one on one on mindset, one on tools, one on system, and extensive training. It's, what I try to do is I don't. If you're looking for like seventy five hours of training, it ain't that. <laughs> If, if you're looking, because I don't think it's necessary. If you're looking for 
something that's focused on helping you get copy done and out the door quickly. That's exactly what it is. The train, the videos are short and fun. I basically, you look at the top, the top uh, image is exactly what are used throughout the entire, as you had on the screen and throughout the entire toolkit. Um, I think it's important right now. We want to have fun. You know, you want to have fun. Um, if you want, I can, if you, um, I will give, if you want to look at, here's what it, here's an element of the, Here's, you know, Brian, this, if you want to open up, there's a PDF here I just sent you. All right. Um, you open that up and show everybody. That'll give them an idea of what the actual course looks at. You got it. There it is. Okay. So this is, this is one of the bonuses including This is the killer copy. So this is like a checklist to use before you send out any copy. Because it's very important to have like something like, because I've made a lot of mistakes in sending out copy. And so this basically captures some of the lessons learned and things you should do before you send it out the door. Because again, you don't know until you send it out the door. But if, you know, and again, this gives you an idea of what it looks like. I didn't just send you a text document. You know, I tried. This is basically, I think I I do I'm doing the classic comics version of magnetic marketing. <laughs> All right, and I love it because. In the, in the course itself, you are on video explaining and, and hand-holding people how to get through it. And I'm guessing this these are the additional things that they can download as they're going through your course. Right. 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 Yeah, if you go to the next page, it'll show them. There we go. There you go. Notice it looks like a Dick Tracy kind of a character there for those of us that are old enough to know what that is. And see, it's, it's, it's made fun. It's made light. Uh, but it gets the point through. And then when you watch his videos and follow along and do the exercises, so that's the thing, it's interactive. And I think those are the most effective forms of training, not just read and watch video and then, okay, now now go off and do it. But he does it as you're going through the course so that you feel more involved. In, and it's like, well, if I don't do this, I don't think the rest of the course is going to be very good to me, so I'm going to do it. So it was a, <laughs> I love the way you did that. It was really well done. Well, thank you, Brian. I really appreciate that. My goodness, I, Jack, what's going on, man? I just looked at the time. So before I, go, I run off away from this screen, so the, the URL is write, killer, copy, fast, and write is spelled W-R-I-T-E, killer, mm -hmm. copy, fast, dot, info, forward slash, deal, D-E-A-L. So that is where you can go to uh, get access to this amazing course. Uh, it does come at a price. He does have also a free gift to give away. And you know what? We're at that moment. Uh, it's getting toward the end of our show. I cannot believe it. So I'm going to just bring that up right now on the screen. And if you go to the following URL, we'll get that up here as well. There it is. This one is writekillercopyfast.com. Not info.com forward slash the number three and the word steps all together. So write killer copy fast.com forward slash three steps. I'm saying that over and over for those that are listening to us on the podcast only afterward. Uh, you want to go there and grab your free gift. What is that free gift all about, Mr. Turk? It's well, it's kind of a like a mini little mini course that gives you assist, it gives you again sort of mindset tools and a system for creating headlines. It's a very simple system for creating uh, headlines that you can use uh, with websites, with sales pieces, postcards, whatever. And it's just kind of fun and simple to show how you can actually get things done quickly. And I, as I said, I think everybody here is a better, is the, is the perfect writer for their stuff. I really do. I mean, nobody can, and if you can't write, if you can't type, you can speak, you know, <laughs> and you can speak passionately about what you provide about your customer and how much you care for your customer and the difference you can make in their lives. You can you can speak that, record it, get it transcribed, you know, find an editor, you know, whatever. You know that, you know, just edit a little bit, send it out, see what happens. <laughs> but I'm a big fan. Send it out, see what happens. <laughs> Don't hey, organize it. You're absolutely right. You don't know if it works until you get it out there and you get the feedback of whether people took the steps that you want the copy to give them to, to go through. So it, it's so true. And so a lot of people get uh, brain freeze or writers. What is it called? Writers, not writers freeze. Is it writers? Writers block. Writer's block. Writer's block. 
Yeah, because they're too worried about is this going to work. Well, the only way you're going to find out is if you do it. So maybe do you do do you coach on like writing multiple versions out of the shoot, or just write one and shoot it out, and then write other versions afterward? I tend to be. I tend to write as fast as I can, get it done, get a draft done, and then sit on it. I, th I believe in sitting on something for a day. Um, I'm actually working on a small project. And I'm working on a small project, a real tiny little project right now that I, I'm i about 85% done on the first draft. And I'm just letting it sit. And then I'm going to finish and do finish the first draft tomorrow and probably let it sit for an hour or so, go for a walk or whatever, and then do another edit and then ship it. I mean, that's... I don't believe in, you can, I think it was Picasso who said, art is never finished, it's only abandoned. And we can tweak and tweak and tweak and tweak and tweak forever, not knowing. And this is a lesson I learned, again, a lesson from Microsoft. You know, if you don't ship it, you can't sell it. Yeah. They were very hardcore, again, with my Microsoft project management cube, very hardcore. There's a deadline. You yeah. hit that deadline, and you may have to sacrifice some stuff. You may have to go, well, you know what? I don't know if that headline's the best. I don't know if these are the best bullet points. I don't know if my offers are great. You're going to have sec, but you know what? I'm going to ship this thing out. Come Friday. It's happening. It's going out Friday. <laughs> Come hell or high water. <laughs> and that's the mindset you need to have. That's and the frame you have. I love the headline. The frame 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 that, that's what gets people to open the the whatever it is, the email or read farther down on the, the copy of the web page or, or the article, whatever it happens to be, uh, the headline is like it. You know, if they if they don't pass that, then they're not going to get into the, the meat of all the stuff you spent all that time, which won't be much time if you follow Jack's system and you write killer copy fast, but it's still time nonetheless. And you want to, you know, increase the odds of people taking it to the next line of your copy. If it's the subject line and that's your title, and it grabs their attention, they will be more apt to open it and, and read your email if that's an email. So mm -hmm. just phenomenal stuff. And we're at the end here and I need to fulfill my promise, Jack. And that was, I promised people something. I promised them that they can learn or they can um, qualify and enter to win a five night stay at a five star <laughs> luxury resort. Compliments of the big insider secrets. You see the red circle above Jack's head there if you're watching this, either live or recorded video. And here is where Jack and I will both give you permission to temporarily take your gaze away from the screen. If you're not watching on your phone, uh, then, then you can take up your phone right now. If you are on your phone, then pull up your messaging app and you'll, you'll want to write this down, especially if you're on your phone because you won't be able to watch and do it at the same time and I'll put it up on the screen and talk through it. If you're watching live right now, what you want to do is take out your text messaging app, fire that up, and where you would type in the name of the person you're going to text, instead, type in this number. It is 314-665-1767. Again, I suggest you write this down. Uh, this is good till the end of the evening tonight. 314-665-1767. So in other words, you have plenty of time about almost six hours. And then you want to put the words in the message area where you would actually type that message, maybe an emoji here or there. No emojis, just two words separated by a dash or a hyphen if you prefer. And those words are peak, P-E-A-K, vacation. So it's peak dash vacation, no spaces, P-E-A-K dash vacation. Hit the send button and then keep an eye on your phone because you will get an automated response asking for one more piece of information. And that's just your email address that will get you formally officially entered into our giveaway system that requires that email address. So that's why we do that. So go ahead and do that right now. And here's the thing, uh, Jack, I like to end every show the same way. And it's with a final question. And oh. is, is this final question I've asked of every past guest expert, and it's it's proven quite phenomenal. I've been uh, pleasantly surprised. I didn't realize it would become this way. And it can be in some ways personal. In other ways, it's not. It just depends. Um, and the thing is, for you, all you have to know is when it comes to answering, there is no such thing as a wrong answer. It doesn't exist. In fact, the opposite is true. The only correct answer is yours. That's all that makes it personal. So it's not deep personal. It's just 
it's going to be your answer that's true to you. And I've loved the variety of responses we've gotten. Uh, I've done 130 plus of these interviews now, and every single one of them has been different. That's how beautiful mm -hmm. this is. And so with that big buildup, Jack, are you ready? Go for it. All right. Jack Turk, how do you define success? Hmm. I, I honestly think success has to do with knowing what matters most to you and staying true to that. Um, and what has mattered most to me, I'll be honest, in my life, throughout my life is uh, I found a, a lovely woman um, when I was young, and I've been married to her since 1980. Uh, Charlotte's the, my purpose in life, um, one of my key purposes in life. Um, and I have been married to her for 40 years, and we have three beautiful daughters, and we have two beautiful grandchildren. And my family is the most important thing to me on this planet. And the fact that I have people who will be there to love me. Um, and may, I was able to pour myself into. And I'm able to share, you know, little things about life and, you know, juggling and rope tricks and crap like that, too, with everybody and have a good time. Um, maybe some value there. But, you know, how success means like I, I have people, people who matter to me and the fact I haven't totally botched that. <laughs> I think it's really important to me. So that's, that's my answer, I guess. Mm, I love that. I love that. And it's to, to a person and you're no different. I no two people have ever answered that the same way and it's still going strong. Uh, and I love that. You know, I have a, a lot of things in common with you because, you know, we go through an exercise. I have several times to figure out what is your why, you know, if, why would you, what would you do? What would you stop at nothing for to make sure that you were you achieve that success? You know, no matter how many times you get knocked backward in business and in life, what would keep you going? And I've been through this process a few times, and each and every time it comes up with my wife as well. And so I can completely relate to that. Uh, that's why I do what I do um, and spend so much time and effort at it so that ultimately we can have the time together and go have fun and hopefully move about the country and the world soon and have <laughs> Huh? Yeah. That. <laughs> Jack, I want to say uh, I appreciate you so much for spending the time being on this show. I hope that everyone who watched this live and, and then even those that are watching and listening afterward get a ton of value. That was timeless information. I sincerely hope you all wrote down those three questions. Uh, those were powerful. And you had the magic trick that also uh, exemplified and, and talked about the three keys to writing killer copy. Uh, if you remember, that was mindset, tools, and systems. So if you don't remember that, this this show is recorded, and you can go back and play it over and over. And I recommend you do that because Jack has been around a while, and he's been very successful. And I've learned uh, the hard way that the easy that the easy button is to simply model success, and that is that's a fancy word for copy. And I know Jack is fine with you copying him by modeling what he does because that's what he's here to do. He's here to help and serve you uh, so that he can be there for his family and keep his, his definition of success alive and well. So I appreciate you all for being here, uh, Jack, especially you, and all of you that have been watching live. That's it for tonight. we got another show coming up soon, so be on the lookout. Go to themindbodybusinessshow.com, and there is a registration form in there. It costs you zero, and all you will get from that our notifications and reminders of upcoming shows as we go live and hope you do that. So you never miss an episode, never miss a man like this, Jack Turk. Um, Jack, any final parting words before we say good night to the good folks? No. Hey, <laughs> look, <laughs> I, I have it. My, 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 my life message comes from a dream I had where my, after my dad passed away, I had him at Salmon dream. He's at the golf course. All the golfers are in front of him for the entire course and carts and stuff. And dad's on the first tee. And he said in this dream, even in heaven, God loves exuberance. Mm. Live with exuberance. Oh, baby. That's the way to finish a show right there. 
Thank you, Jack Turk. Thank you all for watching. On behalf of this amazing gentleman, I am Brian Kelly, your host of the Mind Body Business Show. Until next time, we will see you again. Be blessed for now. So long, everybody. Thanks. Thank you for tuning in to the Mind Body Business Show podcast at www.themindbodybusinessshow.com. My name is Brian Kelly.